All right, so today we're going to talk about John the Revelator and the book of Revelations. Uh, Revelation can be synonymous, uh, I wouldn't say synonymous, but similar to what an epiphany is. Epiphany more of a uh, seeing God face to face or divine or uh, something like that, but it's similar. So it's basically divine revelation. All right. Uh, the story goes that uh, he's the author of the book and he was banished uh, to an island called Patmos. All right. As I've told you about all these stories, they are allegories, usually either about your body and or about your heavenly body. So either the sky, or it is about astrology or it's about your physical body. In this case, we're referring to a part of your brain that used to be called the island of Rail. It was named Rail or Rail. It's named after a German physicist named J.C. Rail. So if you type in island of Rail for Wikipedia, what's going to come up is insular cortex now. When I researched this years ago, uh, it was still under his name, the island of Rail. So now it's under insular cortex. So let me go back. Patmos is a Greek word meaning mortal. So more on that later. Um, so just know this is the mortal or mortal just simply means something that must die. So we just talk about anything that's physical is mortal. So anything's physical, the flesh always dies. Your spirit and soul lives on. All right. So if you uh, do the etymology on the word owl, I-S-L-E, you'll see it's similar to the word island. Um, but it's, it's Latin. The word insula is Latin for the word island or owl. Um, so, like I told you, this is called the insular cortex. The island of rail became the insular cortex. So you can Google insular cortex or island of rail. And I'm going to summarize what, what it is. It's basically a portion of the cerebral cortex or the cerebrum's outer layer. Another word for cerebrum is your brain. So the brain's outer layer is right below your skull. I mean, it basically covers uh, the inside of your skull. All right. So it's involved in consciousness and plays a role in diverse functions, usually linked to emotion. The reason why I highlighted functions because uh, the functions include perception, self-awareness, cognitive functioning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can Google it and, and, and get more uh, details. Also highlighted emotion. Emotion is often the driving force behind motivation, whether positive or negative. Now I highlighted emotion because in one of my earlier videos. I told you there are three necessities, so there are three things that must exist for successful magic. One is the need, two is the emotion, three is the knowledge. I told you the emotion part of it is the power, so you, you, you have to have a need. You need to need something before you even try to go, um, uh, and the need should be something that you can't get by any other means. Like, for instance, you're losing your house, you're trying to save your house. You're trying to attract love, something like that. A need to just have them working out for you in a regular sense. So you use magic. All right. So the emotion behind it is just magic. It can be anger. You're probably upset. Uh, you're losing your house. It can be fear, so on and so forth. So you use that emotion in your magic also. So the emotion is the power of it. The knowledge is the is, is what you how you do the magic. So I, I gave you videos on that, such as you know you can create a sigil. You can use an altar. Uh, different things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I just want to double back on something I brought up before. All right. So what I'm going to go into right now, like I told you, all these stories are allegories. Uh, you can define uh, one of the subscribers asked me on another video about um, Adam and Eve and Yahweh and so forth. So I'm going to go into that because I didn't want to confuse anybody. Do not take any of these. You can't take these stories literally. If you're going to take some of it literally, then you got to take it all literally. It's either all or nothing either way. So allegories are basically, if you if you go define it, I'll paraphrase it. It's basically fictional characters and events uh, presented to give you a hidden meaning. So uh, you, these are fictional. None of these characters exist. Not John. Not none of these. So John uh, means God's grace and mercy. But I also told you uh, the H is silent. So J O N is the same as J O H N. So take the H out. Also, you can uh, substitute a J. To, with an I or a Y. So what John really becomes is ion. So ion is electrically charged, atom or molecule. So we're dealing with electricity because we're dealing with brain. You remember your brain works by electricity. It sends electric signals to your body for your motor skills and so on and so forth. So that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with uh, an ion inside the brain or the ions or electricity in the brain. So this is the island, a part of your brain that's called the island a pat of Rao inside your brain or the insular cortex. So that's what this allegory is really about. All right. Um, I bring up the Kabbalion. 
and the seven laws. So you can Google this, the seven laws uh, or seven principles, I should say, of, of thought, which is thought. That's where we get the word thought or Tahuti. Uh, they turned it into uh, Hermes, uh, the Greeks did. So Hermes, Tahuti, or seven principles. It's a book called the Kybalion, not the Kabbalah, the Kybalion. You can get the book. It's a, it's a little bitty book. Uh, so there are seven principles. I just want to talk about the one. So this is where they get the whole law of attraction when they just give me that secret stuff, but they didn't give you the other six and they didn't really tell you how to really work the secret. All right. So one of them, the first one is the principle of mentalism. I want to bring that up because how that saying goes is all the all is mine. The universe is mental. So all these things, the Kabbalah tree of life, all these stories, these is all in your head. We just use these tools. It's called low magic. We use these tools like altars and different things just to get us out of this physical way of thinking. We fail so far that we forget that this stuff, that we're really not really, really physical and solid. All right. Science tells you that your atoms are made up of 99.9% .9 space. Uh, but we think everything is solid because it's vibrating so fast and it's so, so small. We think we're really solid. All right. So just understand this is an illusion. And, and we, we, we have to get out this illusion and know that we're, we're all, all is one. Okay. Um, so I just want to bring that up because he was asking me a question about uh, how did he, he thought I said Yahweh was a physical God. How did Yahweh, if, if Adam and Eve were uh, cells or uh, 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 sperm, uh, sex cells that in the process of meiosis, uh, why did Yahweh create them and why he didn't want them to have sex or something like that? So he immediately took an allegory and took some parts of it as allegory and other parts he tried to make it true or literal, like they can really have sex and like Yahweh was a real person or a real physical thing. All right. So that's why I want to bring up the, the law, the principle of mentalism. This is all in your head. We're just trying to get back to the source. So uh, I'll go into Revelations, then I'll double back because I'm going to use the uh, Kabbalah Tree of Life to answer his question and to bring this one home also. All right, so the Revelation, uh, you can read the whole chapter one. You can read the whole thing, but chapter one talks about, in, in around verse four, John, this is called the salutation. He's saluting the seven churches. So John to the seven churches, which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from which has once has come and so on and so forth and the seven spirit. So I'm just, you can read it yourself, but he's basically saluting the seven churches. If you go on down a little bit further into that chapter one, uh, Jesus talks has seven stars in his right hand, and seven candlesticks in the left, something like that. He'll tell you that the stars are the angels of the churches and the candlesticks are the churches. So what we're dealing with here is an allegory. So the stars are the seven lights or the Elohim. Um, so these become, in the physical sense, uh, your seven chakras. The churches, you can look at them as like your seven endocrine glands that the chakras line up with, something like that. Or you can look at the stars as just the light that's inside the chakras, however you want to look at it. But just the easy way for me to look at it is the candlesticks or the churches are really your, your physical endocrine glands. Uh, the seven stars or angels or L's or angles of light are really the uh, seven chakras. Okay. Asia is really a sire. Remember there are four worlds. Uh, you have a... Uh, Atzaluth, uh, Briya, um, Yesara, and then the last one is Asaya. So, you know, they say Asia, but it's Asaya. So it's basically the fourth world, which uh, means action. So it corresponds to the element Earth. It's basically the physical or mortal universe. So that's why we came with the mortal or Patmos. We're dealing with Patmos. So it's the final hate. So uh, this might be all jumbled up right now. So I'm going to move this out the way and go back to the Kabbalah Tree of Life. This is the video he was looking at the Moses milk and honey video when he was making these comments. So he was his confusion. So I'm gonna try to clear some things up. There's no such. This is not really real. But these are the seven churches or chakras, if you will, and seven lights. So what happened? Uh, we are the Titans. So we were up here. So we are the Elohim. In Genesis one, it's let us make man. Us is the Elohim. Elohim is just a plural form of gods and goddesses. So there were seven lights, uh, and we created Yahweh. In Genesis two, it starts talking about Lord God. So if you don't know Hebrew, you don't know. They just basically flipped it on you. So now we're talking about Yahweh, which is Lord. They start calling him Lord God. So Yahweh is synonymous with Zeus. So he comes into play under this abyss. So in the Gnostic form, I told you his name was Idalaboth. So, uh, so this is the architect of the physical universe. So he misunderstood me as saying Yahweh was below the throat. So this is 
I was just showing you how the, the tree of life lines up with the body as well as how it lines up with the universe. So Yahweh are this, the Hebrew vowels. I told you these are three of the vowels. Aleph is, is the other, it's the fourth vowel that they use. So we use it, we use three of the vowels and we use one of them twice. The second He corresponds to Isaiah. Okay? So I talked about the four worlds in another uh, another video. So you have to go back and uh, look at that one. Um, so this is Isaiah or Asia where the seven churches are stuck in. So this is the physical world that these seven chakras which are lined up with our seven endocongruence. Now, you need to understand this is none of this stuff is real because this is all an illusion. This is all in our head. But we've, we've fallen so deep down that we've forgotten that we're really just light beings. Alright? Uh, what else can I say about this? Uh, the analogy I use uh, up here is the, the archetypes. The first word is absolute or the archetype. So I use an analogy of a tree. So you have a tree. The next world is the creative world or uh, Bria. Uh, the creative world, you start thinking being creative with it. So I pick two things you can do with the tree. You can make a desk or you can make paper. So that's when you get creative with, oh, what am I going to do with the tree, which is the archetype. Then you go to the creative part. Now you want to form what you created mentally. So in the creation world, or yet sir, this is the formation. So we form it, you form paper, you cut it, and what I make into paper, and then you form the materials for the desk. Um, and you put it together. The last one is where we at, and what we're dealing with the mortal or physical world, where John is at, is, is the um, Asia or Asaya. So this is the, the manifestations world. This is where it's everything where it's done. Um, this is where you have a final product and you use what you've made. So this is where you put to use what you've made. You uh, use the desk and you put the paper on the desk and, and write on the paper. Alright, so that's the analogy I can use. Um, to make sure I didn't leave out anything. Um, so some of the things, like he was saying that Yahweh was below the throat. So don't mix up the story. Most of these allegories have more than one story going in it at one time. I told you the Jesus story is also about your spine and 33 and all that stuff. But it's also telling an astrology story all in one. So when you look at these allegories, don't think that you're telling one story at one time. Both, both stories are not meant to be taken literally, but it's more than one story going on at one time. So that's what I was demonstrating right here. This can be lined up with your body and your chakras as well as lined up with different worlds. So there's no, really no such thing as all these different worlds or these ten different emanations. They're really one on top of each other. So these four worlds I'm talking about, they're really all in one. That's where you get the verse in the Bible where it says, In my Father's house are many mansions. So just change the word house to mind and mansions to dimensions. So in my Father's mind, because all is mine, which is the Father is all, in my father's mind are many dimensions. All right, so we're just different, dealing with different vibrations. So, so as you if you change your vibrations, what meditation and magic does, you'll be able to go into these different dimensions. But if you're vibrating at a certain frequency, you're gonna always appear to be solid. So physical in the physical world, or be more dense. Um, so I just want to clear that up. Um, you gotta understand, we created Yahweh. Yahweh is just a is a vow. We made vows. A vow, V-O-W-E-L, is a vow to L. L just means light or power. So that's our emotion. We made the vows. We were the Elohim that came from this, the darkness or the void, the, 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 tri the triple negative, triple darkness. We became from the negative void, and then we created what we call Yahweh in Genesis 2 with our vows or words. So these are the vows. But then we fell down here and started worshiping what we created. So we, we started worshiping our thought form. And that's why I told you, if you look at all the movies of the Titans, it's our fear or our worship of these gods that we created that keep them existent. All we got to do is remember that we came from up here and we're the gods, we're the Titans. We don't have to worship the Olympians. And then we'll ascend back to where we started. All right. Hope that makes sense. Um, the main point of the video was to talk about basically John the Revelator and uh, how he is an allegory for your brain. So I hope you got that point.